we want the people, ordinary people like all of us, to have an input, to have a voice. And again, that's like my primary uh, primary goal. I, it wasn't Star Trek, they had a prime directive. Prime directive, there you go. Okay, Star Trek. Yeah. So my prime directive uh, is to give people a voice in our government. Uh, so that's that's a little bit about uh, the budget and about bringing money back, which originally came from Nick's question about uh, the money we're bringing back. And we're talking about money that's going to be used for some real projects, um, roads, bridges, schools, libraries. Uh, you know, I hear a lot of people, as they go door to door, I ask them what they're concerned about. People tell me, well, it's a town problem. Like, we've got an intersection with real bad traffic. Or, uh, you know, but these town problems are really state problems because we have to see that our towns get the funding, which is our money to begin with, get the funding to address these problems. So, okay, that's one issue. And let's move along. And uh, how's about I'll call on and tell us your name and, and what you're doing. And you know, a, a long-time advocate for the New York Health Act, but I'm not going to bring that up because that's not the problem. The problem is corruption and corruption in politics on both sides. We've got everybody who is a Democrat who says they'll vote for the New York Health Act, and they won't even let it come up in the Assembly or the Senate. Why? Because it's corruption, and it's allowed. New York, the New York Supreme Court said it. So we need a change in the way we vote. We need ranked choice voting, like Maine and Alaska and New York City. We need to be able to be independent and vote in any primary. So we don't have to keep going and switching our affiliation if we want to vote in a primary with one side isn't having any. And the fundamentally different way of voting in this state. So people actually can vote for the people they want. And so people can actually make a difference. Because right now we've got a duopoly and they're owned by the corporation. What are you going to do, Joe? Corruption, that's easy to pick this up, right? Right, right, yeah, right. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, my background, as some of you know, um, I've been an activist, uh, and what that means is I've been one of the people who tells our legislators what they should be doing, just like Sir Dan and, and many others. And the primary issue that I focused on, now we, there are lots of issues about environment and equal rights and health care, but the primary issue that I focused on over the years is the corruption, the corruption of big money in politics. Because that, I think as, as Sergei was, was uh, suggesting, is the underlying cause. It's the reason that we have policies that help the ultra-wealthy, help big corporations, people like us, not so much. Not so much. And we, so I'm going to unpack, it's, it's a big question here, you're going to give me a few minutes off to answer that one. Uh, so corruption is a big problem. Campaign finance reform is a solution. It's a limited solution. Uh, as Sergey mentioned, uh, you all should be familiar uh, with the Citizens United Supreme Court decision, right? And there were a couple of others, as Buckley versus Vallejo and McCutcheon. But what those Supreme Court decisions, which I think are erroneous and absurd, said that you can't stop big money interests from putting their money into politics, trying to effectively buy political power spending lots of money to win elections. And uh, so we've had some improvement on this. Uh, we can't stop the big money, but we can provide an alternative, and that's publicly financed elections. That's uh, something that we have actually gotten. Many of us fought for that for years, uh, and we had that passed so that for state assembly and state senate races, and also for statewide races like governor and uh, controller, there's public funds so people can run without taking special interest money. And I, when I started this election, my 
first, the first thing I said, I made a pledge not to take any special interest money, not a dime. And I challenged my opponent to do the same. <laughs> uh, and I won't take a dime from big corporations, from oil companies, from insurance companies, from Wall Street, from billionaires. Uh, and public financing allows me to be competitive. Uh, there's a lot more we can do. Uh, the campaign finance law that passed was good, but not good enough. Uh, you can give $3,000 to uh, a state assembly candidate. I think that's way too much. I think we should cut that way down. Uh, maybe a thousand to a thousand should be the max. I don't think any of you all have contributed three thousand to my campaign. Have you? <laughs> okay, it's not too late. It's legal. <laughs> uh, it's, it's crazy. It's unbelievable, but it's legal. Uh, and so we need to reform how campaigns are financed, uh, and we need to bring down those limits. So there's a lot more we can do about corruption, and we can make voting uh, a lot more democratic. When I say democratic, not capital D, I mean lowercase d, democratic means as in democracy. Uh, some of the things we can do include ranked choice voting, which some states have. I'll briefly describe it, don't want to go all day. Uh, it's where uh, it really helps people who want to run on third parties. Uh, and so, for example, let's say uh, there are four, you know, four candidates in the race. One is a member of the Green Party, uh, and that's your favorite, let's say. But if you, I might be, let's say I'm another candidate, I might be your second favorite. And then there's a member of the um, Republican Party and the Right to Life Party or something like that. And right now in our current system, if you vote for that Green Party candidate, but you kind of like me as the second best, you might actually be helping the Republican get elected by not voting for me. With ranked choice voting, you give your preference. You'll say, my preference is, let's say, for the Green Party candidate, and my second choice would be for Joe, the Democratic and Morgan Families candidate, for example. And what happens, this is a little complicated, so I just want to get a point across, is uh, if somebody gets over 50% of the vote, they'll be automatic winner. If nobody gets 50%, whoever got the least amount of votes, we go to the second choice of the people who voted for them. And so in effect, it allows you to vote for a third party without actually helping the party that's kind of opposite to you. So that's one of the many uh, reforms. And uh, yes, other states do it. It's a little complicated. Uh, but we can make it easier for people to vote their conscience, people to uh, really want to vote. Because there are some people who, and I don't agree with, with everything Sergei has said, I, but some, there are some people who think Democrats are voting with all bad. Believe me, I, I talk to a lot of people who think so, and, and, and some people slam the door in my face. Not too many, not too many. Uh, but if, if that's how you feel, that gives you a voice. So, also, I'm just going to briefly mention the New York Health Act. You don't mind if I digress. It wasn't the main thing. The New York Health Act is a bill that would create a public health care, universal health care system in New York. Uh, you all know that United, the United States is the only developed nation, the only industrialized nation that doesn't have universal health care. Uh, we have people who go without health care. There are tragic stories, I won't get too, too many of them, of people who, somebody, for example, misses a payment on their health insurance. Their health insurance is cut back, they don't get their medication, and people have died from lack of health care. And, and we all know about lots of health care horror stories. We have to take this tremendous amount of co-pays and, and uh, huge amounts of money out of pocket, and, insurance companies are denying care that you need, but there's an alternative. In Canada, they have universal health care started one province at a time, and eventually the whole nation adopted it. Here in the U.S., New York can lead the nation. We can create a universal health care program 
where we collectively insure ourselves. That means goodbye insurance companies. Uh, insurance companies take a lot of our money. They keep plenty of it for lavish CEO salaries, for profits, and then sometimes they pay for your health care, sometimes they deny your health care. Okay? We can get rid of that system and replace it with a public health care system. It will save lives and it will save money. The, uh, the studies have shown it would save money for 98% of New Yorkers. The ultra wealthy might pay a little bit more, and I know you're all going to cry about that. <laughs> we don't have any billionaires here, do we? Okay, just wanted to. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the politics and the corruption. New York, you all may know, used to be have a Republican-controlled Senate and a Democratic-controlled Assembly, right? You all probably know that. Then a few years ago, the Democrats finally gained control of the Senate and have what's considered the trifecta now. But before that happened, before the Democrats controlled the Senate, the Assembly, Democratic as it was, voted for the New York Health Act and passed it. Right? Now, the Democrats took control of the Senate, and the Democrats in the Senate are for it. But guess what happened in the Assembly? All those Democrats who supported it and voted for it, not so much anymore. It didn't even come up for a vote. Uh, and again, the problem is politicians 